What do you guys want to ask? Yeah. Good question. On July 18th, 2020, Keith Thomas was paralyzed from the chest down after a diving accident. It was a nice day, it was July, and we were just hanging up by the pool, and I went to dive into the pool, aggressively as usual. I was left with a party always, and then I just blacked out. Next thing you know, there was a helicopter on the front lawn. I broke my neck. I think my bottom of my head hit the cement just really hard. I don't even think I've even seen that. And you know, the next, the next day I couldn't even move. I love this picture of you. I think I was in pure shock. I didn't realize I was going to be able to, I didn't realize I was going to be able to walk for the rest of my life. That's Keith in one of our other pictures. Three years later, Thomas is slowly regaining movement and his sense of touch in his hands and arms, thanks to a novel double neural bypass clinical trial conducted by researchers at Northwell Health's Feinstein Institutes for Medical Research in New York. So open your hand and then when you feel some pressure in the hand, uh, you will hopefully then be able to actually uh, feel that sensation. Uh -huh. We've developed a double neural bypass, reconnecting the brain, body, and spine uh, to restore lasting gains in movement and the sense of touch in a human. So you weren't even able to lift off the, the chair for the rest? Like wow. an inch or two. About an inch or two, okay. And then how about the left side? You're getting all the way to your mouth. Yeah. You're, able to touch, you're touching your chin? I scratch my chin. Since the early 2000s, researchers have restored limb mobility to people paralyzed after accidents or strokes using techniques like brain-computer interfaces, neural bypass, spinal cord stimulation, and robotic limbs or exoskeletons. But what makes Thomas's double neural bypass a groundbreaking feat is that it connects the brain, spine, and body to restore both movement and the sense of touch, even when he is not attached to external systems. I feel it on the wrist. We have started to see some lasting new sensations in his arm that are present even when we turn off the bypass. This is very, very encouraging and we'll be looking uh, very closely at this as the trial continues. A surgeon implanted five electrode arrays in regions of Thomas's brain that control movement and feeling. The arrays decode and transmit his brain activity to an amplifier on his skull. Those signals are then sent to a computer, which sends another message to electrodes placed on his skin, stimulating the muscles he needs to move. Keith, can you hear me? Okay, Keith, I want you to tell me if you feel anything in your fingers, okay? Tell me what you feel here. I place it right over one area and he said, I feel my thumb. I said, what part of your thumb? He said, my thumb tip, the inside of my thumb tip. And I said, oh, we found it, we got it. So I said, okay, we, I just go down a little bit lower and I found the fingertip of the first finger and the second finger. At that point, we brought in the actual device, mounted it onto the skull and then used these wires to gently lay them without damaging them and place them precisely in those three areas that felt the fingers, as well as the two areas where we knew that his hand motor function was. This gives us the ability to listen in on uh, individual neurons in the brain and to kind of intercept those conversations and reroute those signals to the areas of the body that are needed. As I touch it, you can see the spikes happening, and then you can see it. When I feel the sense of touch, it's like, it's unreal, because I haven't felt that in three years now. See an actual person, like a family member, touch you and feel that is different. It's one thing to see it in the operating room and placing it there and being pretty sure you got it, but it's another thing to actually see it in real place and this person to be able to tell you that's what they're feeling. So that was really, really gratifying. 
It just changed my life. Or else I'd probably sit and be sitting at home doing nothing.